Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the zipper sinnet bracelet. We did this one years ago on this channel, but I just thought it was time for a refresher. So for this project, I'm going to use five feet of both imperial red and gray scale. You can get away with four feet of each if you're making an eight inch bracelet like I am, but it's going to cut it really close. And so I'd suggest leaving a little bit of extra room, if not a foot, a couple inches maybe. And then I'll be using a three eighths inch buckle. Let's dive in. So like with most two color bracelets, we're gonna start by fusing the colors together. So we'll just take an end of each. It helps if they're not super melted on the ends. I just barely melted these ones. That way we can melt them more now without turning them black. Just melt both ends, hold them together. Then once you have that melted, we're just gonna fold it in half, just to offset from that melt point a little bit and then we're going to put that fold down through the buckle. Once it's through, we'll put the buckle down through that loop and pull it tight so we have our cow hitch. This melt point is just going to get covered up later on with our weave. So now I'm going to detach the other end of our buckle and trace our cord down to the other end. Just want to make sure that they're not Fold it around each other. Put those down through the top as well and pull it back to the other side until you have the bracelet length that you want. Like with other weaves of paracord bracelets, you just want to measure from the end of this buckle to the base of the teeth on this side. And that's usually going to be one inch longer than your wrist measurement. I was going to use this video to show how much easier a bracelet like this is on a jig but I forgot to bring the jig today. So you're just gonna see me struggle through this without a jig, and I'll kind of tell you about parts that would be easier if I were doing this on a jig. So I pinched this off right at eight inches. Just to keep my length there, I'm gonna hold my fingers on the end. First thing that would be easier with a jig, I wouldn't have to worry about keeping the length. Then I'm just gonna take one cord and bring it over the top, just like I would with a Cobra bracelet and then go underneath that other color. But then instead of bringing this cord around the back, we're gonna bring the same color that we just crossed over, over the top of both red cords to go down through the middle right here. And we want this cord to stay straight. If this one loops around the grayscale while we're tightening it, it's gonna mess up the pattern of our weave. So now again, to keep my length correct, I'm gonna pinch the end there, hold onto my red with the other fingers, and once it's tightened down, it should look about like this. Now we're gonna switch sides, bring the red over the top, and then go underneath our grayscale. And then we're gonna grab the end of our red and go down through the middle of our cord. Pull all the extra slack through. And this time we want to keep our gray scale straight as we tighten down that red side. So once we're done, we should have a loop of gray up here, almost laying flat. And then this loop of red on this side, almost laying flat. As we make this bracelet, we just want to make sure that we don't tighten things down too far. Like if I pull on this red cord too much, we've got the gray one that sticks out the middle of our bracelet rather than staying on its side like it's supposed to. In this bracelet, we want the red to stay on the left and the gray to stay on the right, or whatever colors you have, you want them to stay on their respective sides. You'll see that as I go through the time lapse. So we're just gonna keep on making more knots, changing up which side we start with each time. You'll also see that because I don't have a jig, I struggle to keep these middle strands straight as I'm weaving. All right, so towards the end there, you can see it was getting tricky to put the end through the middle. And I've got one more of those to do um, just to finish it off so that both cords are on the bottom. I'm gonna take this red cord and bring it down through the middle right alongside this one. So I'm just gonna kind of pinch my weave up there. Then 
There we go. We'll pull that one nice and tight so that it lays nice on top. And we'll just clip it on the bottom and melt it against like usual. So there we go. That is finished. You'll notice that I only have six inches left of that um, grayscale color. This one ended up a little bit longer than my test one, so this is about eight and a quarter inches. So that's how much um, it can go wrong if you just change one little thing about the bracelet. So that's really why I like to leave extra room. I know a lot of you guys like to save, you know, every last bit of your paracord. Um, but I just hate running out of paracord in the middle of a project. So if I would have gone with four, I would have been a little bit short. On my other one, my test one here, you can see it's just barely shorter. But that one, I had a full foot left over. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding how much cord to use. So there's our finished zipper sinnet. I like the look of this one with the zigzag two colors. I thought that this was just worth redoing as that old video doesn't have much visibility anymore on YouTube. If there are any other videos like that that you'd like us to redo, any that were unclear in the first place or just have been a while since we've done them, definitely let us know as well as any new ideas that you'd like to see on this channel. As always, we'll put links in the description to where you can find the materials for this project. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.